G'day Curd Nerds, today we're making Double Gloucester. Now Double Gloucester is traditionally made in Gloucestershire in the United Kingdom and it is a rich um, cheddar type sort of cheese. The main sort of milk comes from Gloucester cows. Um, now I don't have Gloucester cows so I'm going to use a, a fairly rich sort of milk, cow's milk, at least 3.5% um, butter fat. Now this cheese also has the addition of annatto, um, so we'll be adding some of that in to give it a deeper uh, yellow slash orange colour as it matures. Anyway, let's get on with the cheese. So you'll need 12 litres or 12 quarts of cow's milk, at least 3.8% fat, uh, 3 eighths of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture, 16 drops of annatto in quarter of a cup of water, 3 quarters of a teaspoon of calcium chloride, 3 quarters of a teaspoon of liquid rennet, and 3 tablespoons of non-iodized salt. So once you've poured your milk in, we're going to bring it up to temperature. So the target temperature initially is 32 C or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're going to add in our mesophilic culture now. So that's an eighth of a teaspoon there. So I'll put three of those in. Gently sprinkle it over the top. Now because I'm using a larger volume of milk, obviously I need to add more starter culture. Normally I only use 10 litres of milk, I thought I'd make a bigger cheese this time. So we're going to let the starter culture sit on top to rehydrate. Otherwise you may just stir in clumps of mesophilic culture and that wouldn't be good for anybody. So I'm just removing the uh, utensils there, so the spoon and the and the thermometer. Just get it out of the way. So I rehydrate that for five minutes. So five minutes later, I'm going to take the lid off. I'm going to stir that through. So a fair bit of cream has arisen on the top. So I'm going to stir that for about a minute to make sure that's fully incorporated. I'm stirring a using a top to bottom motion so not in a circular motion otherwise the culture won't go all the way down to the bottom of the milk so once that's stirred in we're going to put the lid back on I'm going to let that rest for an hour to ripen now ripening is the lactic bacteria uh, converting lactose into lactic acid so once again, all the cream's risen to the top again because I'm using unhomogenized milk. So I need to give that a bit of a stir back in again. Now just checking the target temperature again before I add all the other ingredients in. So it should still be about 32 or 90 Fahrenheit. Uh, close enough, 31.8. So just make sure that your milk is moving before you add the ingredients in. So we're going to add the annatto in now. That's the first ingredient. So this just colours the milk. It doesn't add any flavour to it. It makes it a, a deeper or richer yellow. Sometimes orange depends on how much you add in. Double Gloucester is known to be um, dark yellow, light orange colour. So just stir that in for about a minute. You'll see some of that yellow stuff on the top. That's the cream that I couldn't incorporate back into the milk. It's now turned into cultured butter and floating as globules of fat on the top. It's nothing to be worried about. Um, it will drain off with the whey eventually when you uh, drain off the curds and whey. 
So now that I've stirred in the annatto, you can see it's starting to change colour. We're going to rest that for 15 minutes before we add any other ingredients. So 15 minutes later, we pop the lid off. And once again, all the cream's risen to the top. And we're going to add in the calcium chloride. So start stirring and then add in your calcium chloride. This helps fortify the milk, adds back some more soluble calcium that may be killed off during the pasteurization process or dispersed, not killed off. And it helps us to set a better curd, a stronger curd. Now this is particularly essential if you're using homogenized milk. Um, you'll get a sloppy curd set if you use homogenized milk without uh, adding calcium chloride. So give that a good stir through for about a minute, top to bottom. And then we're going to add the next ingredient, which is rennet. Now I'm using vegetable rennet or vegetarian rennet. It's microbial rennet. So stir that through for no more than one minute. So bring your milk to rest. It's still spinning a little bit there, but no big deal. I'm going to allow that to set for 45 minutes with the lid on. And that stays at the target temperature of 32 or 90. Now we're going to check for a clean break after 45 minutes. And there it is, lovely, nice, clean split, no sloppiness. And I'm going to use my trusty curd harp to cut the horizontal uh, layers of the curd. I'm going to cut it into 1.25 centimetre or half inch cubes. That's what we're going to attempt to do anyway. So fairly small cute curd size because we want a fair bit of whey to expel. This is a sharp crumbly cheese so we don't want it too moist. So I've done the horizontals now I'm going to do the verticals. Now because I'm using 12 litres of milk in my 14 litre pot I had to Go and grab another curd knife. This is a Mad Millie curd knife that is really long. It's better than my other curd knife. So I've just found. Gets right in there for a deep, um, deep pot of milk. And the milk, the curds tend to move around on you when you try to cut them that small. But just do your best. So a nice even curd size, just makes it easier when you stir later on. There we go, all the curds are cut. And because they're very firm in this recipe, we can start stirring straight away. We're going to stir for 15 minutes. You can see as we stir there, the cubes are fairly even, which is good. Now if you didn't have a curd harp, then you cut at a 45 degree angle. Uh, and do that all around and you will get a fairly decent even curd size. Now if you do find any big bits, as you can see there, I'm using the side of the spoon just to cut those in half. Just gently, as you can see, gently stirring it first. And then as more whey gets expelled, we can stir it a little bit better. Now we're going to slowly heat that up to 37 degrees Celsius or 99 Fahrenheit over the period of 45 minutes. And you have to stir continuously to make sure that whey is expelled. Now this is a very slow heating of the milk. It's only going up by a few degrees, as you can see there, from 32 up to 37 So I'm fairly close to temperature. You can see how small the curds are now after the 45 minutes of stirring. They've probably shrunk by at least two thirds. So they're about the size of baked beans now. Maybe a little bit smaller. You can see it's the whey is fairly yellow. That's basically from the annatto that we added in. 
at the start of the process. So we're going to let the curds now settle to the bottom of the pot. It makes it easier to drain off the curd off the way. So let that settle for 20 minutes. Just pop the lid on so no hair or fluff or dust gets into your cheese. So after the 20 minutes, we take it over to a cheesecloth lined colander and we pour it through. Now you could make ricotta out of this, but I've uh, let it go down the sink. I do have ricotta in the fridge already. There's only so much whey you can drink. Anyway, that's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. So your curds should come out in one big lump. Or one big piece. Let's just see if that works. There we go. That's what we're after. So we'll move the pot out the way. And what we're doing now is we're pressing down on the curds to expel some of the whey out of these, this big slab. And we're trying to make it firm up a little bit. Because this assists when we start doing the chattering process. And it's pressing down a little bit. There's a little bit of force behind it, but not too much. Anyway, so we'll collect that up now and we'll put it into the pot. Try and put it in as one big slab. I could have easily left the cheesecloth in there, but I chose not to. Anyway, so we've got our big slab in there. And I'm just pressing that down to make it into that slab shape. Uh, and then I will then cover it for 15 minutes. Now, if you find your curd slab cooling down a little bit too much, you can just pop it back on in your double boiler or um, put it on top of the pot that I use. I use a little steam pot. I mean, after 15 minutes, you'll see a fair bit of whey has been expelled. What I'm going to do is try and turn the slab over in one piece. A little bit difficult, but do your best. Pretty hard to see when I've got my elbow on the way, but... There we go, one big slab, I managed to do it. There we go, and then just press it down to expel a little bit more whey, and then we're going to cover that for another 15 minutes. If you can, tip a little bit of the excess whey out. It's not that important at this stage. Without your curds going down the sink. And I've just mucked up my slab, so maybe I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, press my slab back down again. This is what happens when you try to improvise on the fly. Anyway, so I've formed up the slab again. That's good. obviously cleaned my hands with soapy water and then dried them off and sprayed vinegar on them before I touched any of the cheese. If anybody's got any hygiene concerns. Okay, after the 15 minutes we're just going to grab our curd knife and cut it into quarters. There we go. Nice and simple. So we're going to stack them on top of each other now, each of the quarters. fingers in the side there but do your best. So grab a quarter of a time and plonk it on another quarter. Hopefully it doesn't break up too much. There we go, a nice big slab. And another slab. Plonk it on top of that one. And see so you can this the weight of each slab on top of each other just assists in uh, expelling more whey, which is good. 
and pop the lid back on to keep the warmth in there. So after 15 minutes, I'm going to take the lid off again and my whole slab pile has fallen over. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to restack that on top of each other again. So for ease of stacking, I've just broken those big pieces in half again. You get the general idea with stacking. Try and expel whey out of the curd slabs as best we can without any pressure besides the natural weight of the curd on top of each other. Okay, so one final 15 minutes and we're ready to cut it into small fingers or cubes. Well, they're not really cubes, anyway. So transfer them to a chopping board. And then we're going to cut them into one by 2.5 centimetres, or that's half inch by one inch pieces. So get all the curds out you can. Cutting them into the pieces there. Now I've got to tip all that out. There we go. So put the cubes back into the pot again. Just make them as even as you can. There's no real science to this. Except this helps the cheese form later on. And it makes it easier to mill the salt in if we're using these big cubes. cheese, all the curds, all cut, any little bits just pop in, they'll be fine, they'll press in later. Okay, any excess that I had in the mould there, that was from the leftover whey water. Okay, we're going to mill the salt in now, so we're going to grab our cheese salt, we're going to add in our three tablespoons. So just sprinkle that over the top of the cubes. So initially I did two and a half and then I remembered it was supposed to be three. Uh, you'll see that in a minute. Anyway, just mill those through. Trying not to break the cubes up and trying not to expel any more whey than you have to because if the whey any whey starts coming off it and it's creamy in colour, then you're actually losing some of the fat content. So anyway, I remembered to put the extra half a teaspoon in. There we go. And just stir that through. Okay, now we put the cubes now into the mould. Oh, there's a bit of action there. Okay. So just handfuls of the cubes into your cheesecloth lined cheese basket. Now I'm using 165 millimetre. Uh, that's the width across the top. I think it's about six and a half inches. So press it firmly as you go through, go along. Not too firm, the press will do most of that for you anyway. But get all the bits out, all the little extra bits of salt in there that may be lurking on the sides and stuff. So get it all out. All good. Okay, then we're going to move it over to the cheese press. So I'm using a spring type press here. The spring, when it's fully closed, needs 50 pounds of pressure to fully close it. So that's how I gauge how much pressure to add. So if I close the spring down to um, say uh, half then that's uh, 22 and a half pounds or well, 25 pounds sorry okay see what I'm doing there I'm pulling down the cloth at the sides so it doesn't bunch up and make any impressions and just put the largest piece over the top again of the of the cheese and then put the follower on top of that don't put the follower directly onto the cheese it doesn't press properly
So the good thing is that uh, the 12 litres or 12 quarts of milk, um, the curds created by it actually do fit in this big basket, which is a good value. So I'm going to tighten down the spring now to about halfway. So about 11 kilos or 24 pounds, 25 pounds. I'm going to do that for an hour. Now because this spring press does expand uh, as the cheese contracts, you've got to re-tighten it. Um, probably about every 15 minutes I check on it. Okay, after the hour, we just pull it out of the press. And we're going to take it out of the mould, redress it, and then repress it again. Now, it's very delicate at this stage because you can see the cubes haven't fully compressed or closed up yet. So just be gentle when you pull it out of the cheesecloth there and when you pop it back in again. So just make sure that there's no loose bits, put the cloth over the top and put the follower on top then and then we'll just repress it again so uh, stronger pressure this time, 22 kilos or 50 pounds so I'm closing the spring all the way up now I will have to go and check that um, every hour or so I left this overnight, so this that was about 12 hours. So I come back the next morning in my work clothes, and then we're just going to turn it over and repress for another 12 hours. Now it didn't look too bad at this stage, I might have been able to leave it, um, but I found some imperfections that I wanted to press to close up again because those big cubes. Um, tend to have some surface cracking if you don't press it hard enough. Anyway, so I decided to repress for another 12 hours. Now you may not have to do this. Um, just check the structure of the cheese. Uh, not a lot of whey comes out at this stage. I'm just trying to close up those cubes. Anyway, so that's a full 24 hours of pressing. I'm in my nighttime clothes now. I just got back from work. And we're going to take it out of the press now and we're going to air dry it. So I've just got it on a bamboo mat there, on a bamboo board. So it's fully closed up, fantastic. There's no problems with that, good structure. So we'll leave it on the board to air dry. There it is in all its glory. You can see that the uh, Anato is starting to work and the colour has is quite dark and rich. Okay, now to keep all the beasties off it, I've got one of these little umbrella contraptions. Uh, it just keeps flies and any um, anything that may want to crawl onto my cheese keeps them off of that. So it's quite handy. Okay, so I'm now going to vacuum pack. You can see it's dried out a little bit on the top. Uh, those lines aren't actual lines. That's just where it's dried in between where the cube shapes are, as you can see there. Make sure there's no dust or anything sitting on the top before you vac pack it. Now there was one little tiny surface crack uh, where it dried out too much. Probably should have dried it a day less. So I'm just sealing the bag there, cutting it to shape, slip the cheese in, and then just vacuum seal it. Now I could wax it, and there's a good waxing video if you check out the little information button now but I've cho chosen to just simply vac pack it. Now I'm double sealing it in case the first seal splits. There it is. I'm going to mature that for six months. Well, there you have it, curd nerds. There's my double Gloucester, uh, all vacuum packed as you just saw. It's got some uh, slight cracking on the surface where I probably didn't press it hard enough, but uh, now that it's in the vacuum pack, it all uh, compress all those cracks and it'll all be good. Now I'm going to mature this for six months in the cheese cave um, at it's about 10 degrees. My cheese cave fluctuates between 10 and 13 degrees Celsius. So for six months, so that'll be good and come back in a tape for a taste test uh, for this double Gloucester. Now just before we go, 
The reason it's called Double Gloucester is because Single Gloucester is made with skim milk. Uh, double Gloucester is made with full cream milk, or well, that's uh, cow's milk that is about 4% fat because uh, Gloucester cows have a high fat content. Anyway, uh, hopefully this will uh, get a little bit more orange than yellow from the Anato, and we'll see where we go from there. Now, if you'd like to make this cheese, don't forget we have cheese making kits. I highly recommend the hard cheese making kit. And don't forget that you can check out some other cheese making videos. Also, don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel so you get new and interesting cheese making videos every week. Thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.